to make travel videos that people actually watch. I'm Chris this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you 10 tips for how to make travel videos uh, that are better than just random drone shots. Yes, no discussion of drone shots in this video. I often get asked how I make my travel videos, and in this video, I will be sharing my process that I use. I'll start with ideas, research, script writing, filming, to ultimately editing, uploading, and putting the video on YouTube. Uh, this is also my 50,000 subscriber celebration, and so I'll be talking about this giveaway that I'll be doing of a fancy Yellow Productions t-shirt. Stay tuned for more information on the giveaway coming up. And if this is your first time here, you're on the live stream, please ask questions. That's what it's here for. I try to make this as interactive as possible. If you are watching the archive, well, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell, turn on notifications for notifications of new live streams uh, when I do them many Mondays. All right, so let's go to the first idea. The first uh, tip, it starts with an idea, and that is coming up with an idea. All videos, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta have an idea of what you're starting with. And for me, making travel videos, well, that starts with a trip, where am I going? And so I might be going to Tokyo, I might be going to Hawaii, and I think about if it's a place that I've already been, what other videos have I made? Uh, related to what I've already made, I think about what's interesting at this destination. I also always do research on YouTube to see what people have already uploaded and put on YouTube because I don't really wanna be duplicative and repeat what is already there. And so I try to look for things that I would consider to be original original to a particular destination. And uh, if I'm doing, well, I've got some classic themes that I typically do. Uh, for example, you've seen my 10 things to know videos, cheap eats videos, how to ride public transit. They're sort of this list. And, uh, but I've also got things that I do that are new and interesting, like weird things in a place or things about a particular attraction. One of my most popular videos was one that I've only ever done one of, which is the five worst cheap hotels in Las Vegas. That was definitely an off the wall idea uh, that I actually got an idea uh, from a friend that I was working with. So, um... Also, if I'm doing a live stream like one of these, then I look at what is something I can talk about for an hour, right? I got a lot of time to take up and so I have to make sure my content is more than just 30 seconds. It certainly helps to have you all ask questions, uh, but I then write that out to a script, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, on Facebook, Melanie's on. She says, hi, Topher. I know you're there somewhere. Melanie, you probably can't see him because he's in the corner of the Facebook stream, but I sort of switched them around so you can see it a little bit more. Uh, and on YouTube, Hello to everybody's on. Brandon, Car Review, SoCal, Seth, Melanie, Brandon, Hendrick, and thanks to everybody uh, for the 50,000 subscribers. All right, so let me go to the second thing uh, for making a travel video. So the second thing I do, and that you would do if you were making a travel video, is research. Uh, so I think one of the things that I pride myself on in my videos is that they are informative. Fun, informative, and entertaining. So in order for videos to be informative, I actually have to do some research. Either me or Topher, but one of us has to research the video. And, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I'll certainly look on YouTube for other travel guides. I look on Wiki Travel. I look on TripAdvisor. I look on blogs. I look on Flyer Talk. If you've never been to Flyer Talk, Flyer Talk is one of my favorite online travel forums, really big with the frequent flyer community, and I will even read books. I know books are so old school, but one of my favorite travel book authors is Rick Steves. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Rick Steves. He does, he's famous for doing travel guides on Europe. He also has a number of PBS shows, but I feel Rick Steves is kind of like the height of informative videos, if you ask me. And uh, so I will take all the research that I collect from all these different places, I will put it in a Google document on Google Drive. That way I can look it up on my phone. I can print it out. Uh, and so sometimes in my videos, you might see me looking at my phone because uh, I'll see if I can bring up one of these right here. So this was um, a video I just published this weekend, which is Osaka, things to know, 10 things to know before you go to Osaka. And of course, I bring up the blank document, so that's really good to do on here. How about I do this one, which is how to ride the New York City subway. And if I move this closer so it doesn't 
wash out on the screen. There's actually text, and this is essentially the text of what I'm talking about. I don't read it verbatim, but it just makes sure that when I actually go someplace, I know what I'm gonna say, and I'm not having to make it up all on the spot, and I'm actually based in reality and things that are real. Uh, on the live stream, lots of people are saying hello to Topher. Topher says hello back. He doesn't join in every live stream because Topher is getting old. He's an old panda. We've had Topher for, gosh, it seems like, I mean, well, we've been doing the channel since 2008 and it's 2018, so at least 10 years, but we've had Topher probably for four years before that, so he's probably a 14 or 15 year old panda. He needs his beauty sleep sometimes to rest and relax, but he had to join us for the uh, 50,000 subscriber celebration today. Uh, Burbauer Insurance and Travel Services Company says my videos are a little goofy with Mr. Panda, but that's okay. I don't think it's just Mr. Panda that makes them goofy. I'm okay to be considered goofy. That is just okay with me. And he also asked if I am a travel agent. I am not a travel agent. I just enjoy doing travel videos. Uh, Norman Diaz says your videos are enjoyable more so than some others who have a million followers. Norman, thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words. Uh, certainly my fans are the best, so you guys are awesome. Um, Burbauer says, I was looking for your best five Las Vegas hotels. I've not done that one yet. That's probably one that I need to do. Ivan B asks, how many yellow t-shirts that you have? Gosh, I have probably 25 or 30 yellow t-shirts. I mean, when I pack, I basically just bring yellow t-shirts. Uh, and that's actually a great thing thinking about making travel videos. If you're going to make travel videos and you're shooting on different days, if you want the continuity, well then it's really good to actually have a whole bunch of the same shirt. And I don't want to wear the same shirt every day because then I'll be smelly and stinky and nobody wants to be around me. So I literally have a yellow shirt for like every single day that I go on travel. Uh, Shanio on Facebook says, congrats for your 50K subscribers. Thanks, Shanio. I appreciate it. Um... So a lot of other people saying hello to Topher, Car Reviews, Andrea, LA from uh, Tampa. SoCal Seth wants to point out that this is absolutely a somber week. Uh, even though it's great for Yellow Productions, 50,000 subscribers, uh, Anthony Bourdain passed away. Anthony Bourdain, certainly from making travel content, uh, has been someone that I've respected. Uh, obviously, he had a lot of problems in his life with drugs and things like that, which may have led to his demise, but Anthony was a great guy, uh, and I'll respect him uh, pretty much forever. So, uh, Ivan B is watching from Ireland. Thanks for tuning in, Ivan. Uh, Burbauer says, Rick Steves is also the richest travel blogger, probably because probably he has his own TV show and all those books and a travel company. He's probably done out pretty well for himself. Jamie's has joined. What's up? All right, let me go to number three. So uh, the third thing, and this kind of ties into my Google Docs, is that after I've done research, or after you're doing research, if you're traveling, then what I do is I make a script. Uh, so I take those ideas, and not just a jumble of ideas, but I kind of organize them into an outline, uh, because nobody wants to watch a stream of consciousness. It has to be a story. So this is some, where some more thinking comes in. After I've done all that research and collected all that information, how do I weave it together into some interesting story that has a beginning, a middle, and an end? Even if it is 10 cheap eats or 10 things to know, there has to be an order to those things. Uh, my list of notes is usually a bulleted list of notes with those numbers. If I've got destinations that I'm traveling to, I'll generally put in things like the neighborhood that it's in, the address, the name, the subway stop. In the Google Doc, I'll often put in like a website link and sometimes pictures so that I can actually find the thing that I'm looking at constantly when I'm flipping through the document. And the things that I really want to go to, I'll use Google Maps and I will star that location in Google Maps so that when I'm out traveling about, I can open up Google Maps and see all the stars or I can see all the hearts or I'll create different lists like Here's my list of all the attractions I want to go to. Here's a list of all the cheap eats restaurants I want to go to. Here's a list of all the weird things I want to go to so that when I'm done with one, I can just be like, oh, what's nearby? And then I can go to that one. Um, 
Jeff Looney uh, says, how does Topher stay so clean? That's a great question. And we treat Topher with a little bit of a white glove treatment. We have this kimono bag that we carry him around in. It's a bag made of kimono material. And so that's how he stays so clean. We never set him down on dirty tables. We'll only set him down on a napkin. So we do a lot of things to make sure that Topher has his white and black tuxedo always clean and pressed just for you guys. Um, with a Japanese name, someone wished me good afternoon, Chris San. Good afternoon to you, sir. Uh, Sweet Fruit Forever joined from the Caribbean. Uh, thanks for joining in, Sweet Fruit Forever. Theodore Number says, Congrats on the 50k. Thank you, Theodore and Carview and Tutorials. Ryan says, Chris, do you travel with anyone? If so, why don't you show them on camera? Uh, so I am often traveling with Topher, uh, but I often travel with my wife, OC Girl. Um, she is often behind the camera. Uh, sometimes I may travel uh, with my mom. I've taken my mom out to some of the vacations. Some of the video from uh, Kauai was all shot with my mom behind the camera. Uh, other times I might be doing a collaboration, might be having a friend hold the camera, but the one who holds the camera most of the time is OC Girl. If it is not her and I'm just by myself, <clears throat> well then I have this handy dandy Joby Gorilla Pod. This is not a sponsored video, but one of the best things uh, about doing selfie videos is using something like this, the Joby Gorilla Pod, because then I can hold this thing out here like this, and I can flip out this little camera and I can see myself and I can be talking to it. And actually, this ties into number four, which is the uh, fourth thing you gotta do if you're making a travel video is prepare your equipment. And uh, so while you can shoot travel videos with anything, you can shoot it with an iPhone or an Android device or a GoPro or a point and shoot, anything you've got, I think the best thing to shoot travel videos with is a camcorder and I've got a whole video like one hour long about the travel equipment that I use so I'm not going to spend an hour on this but just about five minutes on equipment but I want to talk about why I think a camcorder is the best thing to go with so first of all and particularly Sony camcorders I really like Sony camcorders and here's what I like about Sony camcorders they're very fast and easy to turn on to shoot to turn it on all I do is flip this open Flip the viewfinder open right here. There's a automatic lens cover that opens. You saw that snap right there. And uh, this camera shoots in 4K. It has a stabilized lens. So this whole thing in here, this is a stabilized lens that as I move it around, this thing moves to keep the shot steady. And it's very quick to go from opening it to recording. I can go from opening to recording in about five seconds, uh, which if I've got a DSLR or something like that, and I'm fumbling with a lens cap or I'm fumbling with an aperture setting or a focus or all those things, that really takes away from trying to shoot that moment in a travel video. So this is what I use. It has a 20X zoom, which is also nice for getting things far away. If you want to know the model number of this one, it is uh, called the FDRAX53. And, um, and I have like a 256 gigabytes uh, card in there. So it'll shoot four hours of 4K video. And most importantly, I think the second most important thing for travel videos after good quality video is good quality audio. If your audio is not very good, nobody is going to watch the videos, right? The title of this video was uh, how to make travel videos that people actually watch. And so they need to be able to hear what you're saying too. And frankly, most um, cell phones have really lousy uh, microphones. Um, this works on the iPad that I'm live streaming on because I'm inside, it's not windy, but if you're in a loud place and you want to be kind of far away from the camera, which you often do if you're shooting, you're right, you're not really right close to it, then you need some sort of a wireless microphone. Uh, these Sony cameras have a wireless microphone that goes along with it. Uh, I plug it into the hot shoe. It's a Bluetooth wireless mic. You'll often see me with this little black thing right here. And so that's how you can hear me when I'm like 20 feet away from the camera. And so that is the key. And it actually, that, that microphone does a really good job of drowning out everybody else who's nearby. It's also 
important to have a windscreen on your microphone if you're in a windy location. But in addition to preparing the camera, the gorilla pods so you can shoot yourself, it's also important to bring batteries, and not just one battery, but batteries, batteries, and more batteries. I travel with about five batteries for the camcorder. Uh, I travel with a whole bunch of extra AAA batteries for the microphone. I travel with a USB charger so that I can charge my phones and things like that because ultimately I'll be taking a thumbnail and I'll be taking that with the phone as a selfie because if you don't have any power, then ultimately you'll be really sad and you won't be making much of a video. Uh, and in addition to that, you know, one of the things that's really bad for a travel video or any video, in fact, is if the lens gets dirty. If you're traveling, if it's raining, things like that, it's very easy for a lens to get dirty. So I always travel with a lens cleaner so I can clean that lens uh, before a shot. That's a tip that I would give you, uh, <clears throat> and if you were watching maybe a more like viral video, they might have a title like, five tips to instantly up your travel video game. Well, the one I have for you is if you're using a phone, before you take a picture or shoot a video, take your t-shirt or something and just wipe off that camera lens, right? It's very easy to get the camera lens with fingerprints on it and fingerprints don't do good for your video. So get in the habit before you take any pictures or shoot any video from your cell phone to wipe that lens. You'll thank me later from the quality of your pictures. Um, but other equipment, you might want to take a GoPro, you might want to take a 360 camera, you might want to take an external audio recorder. Sometimes I've done that where I've got the recording on the camera and recording on an external device. You might want to bring lights. Uh, and uh, so I've got some cordless lights, but when I do these live streams, I've also got these large-ish studio lights here. You probably wouldn't take something like this for travel, but you might take something that is more of a, a small device that goes on top of your camera. So you can see, particularly if you're shooting some stuff at night. I mentioned uh, the gorilla pod. You might also want to take a tripod. I've done that on some of my shots. And you might want to take a selfie stick uh, if you're using a GoPro or you're using your cell phone. Um, dun, 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 dun. Let's go to comments. Um, let's see. Brandon says, I have so many yellow t-shirts. Yes, the 25 or 30, it is a lot of yellow t-shirts. Jeff Looney also says, congrats on the 50K, almost to the silver play button. We're pretty excited about that. It will totally go on this wall to go with my red play button right there. For those of you who don't know, if you make 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, then YouTube sends you a silver play button uh, that you can frame on the wall. So absolutely, uh, if you've got friends, that doesn't sound good. Of course, you all have friends. Definitely share my channel with your friends so we can get to that uh, silver play button. Uh, Andrea says, how do you balance travel and work? Um, you know, some of the travel I do uh, is in the nature of my work, but also a lot of the travel I do is personal travel. Um, you know, I get a few weeks of vacation a year. Uh, Topher really likes to go on vacation. And so it may seem like I travel all the time, but you know, I'm still uploading video today that I shot in January in Kyushu. I can easily take a two week trip and turn it into 30 videos. <laughs> and so I think it may seem like I travel more than I do, um, but we generally look at doing about uh, four vacations a year, something like that. We generally do um, a, like maybe like say what I'd call a big vacation, which is like overseas, someplace to Asia or Europe. That might be for a week and a half, two weeks, something like that. Then we might do something that's say in the US or in Canada, something that's maybe like a five hour flight. And then we'll do a few trips to smaller destinations like uh, Vegas or Seattle or Portland or Vail for snow or things like that throughout the year. Um, let's see. Car Reviews uh, is tuning in from South California, Southern California. Car Reviews, what part of Southern California are you in? Uh, Berber Insurance says, are you planning any new trips? Absolutely. I think our next trip is to Bangkok we're talking about. Um, but that's just in the planning stage right now. Uh, Sweet Fruit Forever says, when are the London videos coming? The first London video will be coming this Wednesday. It'll be a hotel review of one of the Marriott's in London, followed by this Friday. It will be 10 weird, is it weird things? I think it's weird things I started with. 
10 weird things? No, 10 free things. 10 free things to do in London. That'll be the one coming out this Friday. Uh, Hendrix has been watching your Las Vegas videos fly in there in December. Hendrix, that's excellent. Enjoy Las Vegas. Topher does have the good life, says SoCal Seth. Brandon says, have you done any Italy vlogs? And Topher looks so great and has a life. Brandon, I've done a few videos on Italy, but not very many. I've got a couple hotel reviews for hotels in Rome. Uh, I think one of my most interesting Italy videos is um, Naples, Italy, the city of trash. Mm. For those of you who don't know, Naples, Italy has a really large trash problem, or it did in the past. It's a pretty entertaining video. And then I've also got a video on Italy in Rome, which I think is one of the coolest Italian supermarkets anywhere. World's largest Italian supermarket there in Rome. Uh, I hope to go back to Rome again to do some more content. I just never seem to have been there long enough to do a lot of, uh, like, normally the big videos that I do. Um, so Calset asked about equipment. He said, have you ever thought about using something like an Osmo Mobile? I have an Osmo Mobile. Um, I like the camcorder much better for um, actual just normal shooting that I do because I like the wireless microphone connection and I also find the image quality coming out of the camcorder is much better than coming out of a cell phone. But the reason I got the Osmo Mobile is for Comic-Con this year when I'm doing the live streams at Comic-Con, I wanted something that was stabilized. Uh, and so I'm going to be trying that out for the live streams at Comic-Con. Uh, I'll let you know how it is, or you can let me know how it is, because chances are you'll all be watching some of that video. Hopefully it'll be a little more stable than me just carrying around a shaky camera. Uh, Hendrick says, would love to see OC Girl in your future videos. I will let her know, Hendrick. Um... Let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, Jeff Looney says, have you used a gimbal for your camera? I think I just answered that question with the previous answer. Um, Jose G says, how do you keep people focused if you're walking? How do you keep focused if people are walking behind the camera making funny faces? Yeah, that's a good question. And sometimes it's a little hard, but people do that. You'll see people behind me waving and things like that. But I've sort of gotten used to it. And I just like, as I'm shooting a video, I kind of try to ignore the people uh, so that I can just focus on whatever the lines or things like that that I'm delivering are. Uh, Brandon says, impressive quality for your fun videos. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate it. Uh, Burbauer says, how does that compare to the GoPro 5? Uh, I'm assuming related to this camera. So this is way better than a GoPro 5. I mean, a GoPro 5, the camera is not optically stabilized. It's stabilized in software. So um, if you're shooting in 4K on a GoPro, um, it doesn't stabilize it. But... It, to get it stabilized, it shoots in 1080p, and then it uses software to basically just error correct and only give you the middle of it. This one, this big, this whole glass thing that's inside of this is basically a six-axis mechanically stabilized lens. So as I move this thing, this the optically and mechanically, this thing is compensating for all the movements that I do. It's a really great way to just to take out some of that jitter uh, and makes it pretty darn smooth. It's pretty nice. Uh, SoCal Seth says he keeps a microfiber cloth with me. That's a good way to clean it too. Cookies Bald Greasy Head says, do you wear yellow shoes too? I do not have any yellow shoes. I have yellow shirts. I have yellow watches. I have yellow jackets. I have yellow maybe scarves, uh, but no yellow pants and no yellow shoes. I haven't made it down to my lower extremities with yellow yet. Melanie says, do you ever feel like you need to put down the camera and just enjoy the moment? I have started to feel that more and more. Melanie, absolutely. And um, I often, if I'm at an attraction, I actually like to start with the camera away and I like to experience the attraction and I like to experience the thing. And then after I've experienced it for a while, then, and I know what I'm gonna do, like then I pull out my camera and be like, okay, let me go shoot this, 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 and this. So it's almost like, vacation mode and then camera mode. Um, one of the ones that I will say that like I was a little probably too into the camera was in Tokyo. I did a video on the robot restaurant, uh, which is a super cool show in Tokyo, but I was holding my camera pretty much all the time. And I feel like I only watched the show through my viewfinder, right? Cause I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing this the whole time. 
And so actually, the next time I went to Tokyo, I went to see the show again without the camera at all, just so that I could enjoy the show. That is a hard one. Uh, Peter the Penguin says, can you do Denver travel guides? Uh, if I am in Denver, I will, Peter. Uh, I'm not sure when I'll head out there. JC says, hi there, Chris. Tracy Conroy's on. Good evening, Tracy Conroy. Good evening, brother. Burbauer says, what's your job? I manage software development projects. I have a computer science background. Uh, though I'm mostly in management now. So Calcet says, will you eventually do travel full-time? Well, you know, maybe if I get to the point of Rick Steves or Anthony Bourdain, rest in peace, maybe, but I think that is probably a long time away. Peter the Penguin says, how do you spell the panda's name? Uh, so I am Chris, this is Topher. Together we make Chris Topher. So you would spell Topher just like you would spell the last T-O-P-H-E-R, the last six letters of Christopher, so T-O-P-H-E-R is how you spell uh, Topher's name. All right, Norman Diaz says, would love to see you in Kauai again with more food reviews. Norman, I'd love to go back to Kauai again. Uh, if I do, I will do more food reviews. Uh, Car Reviews said he's in San Bernardino County, that's where in Southern California. GAC says, are you going to do a 50K special? This is kind of my 50K special. Uh, and uh, if you missed it at the beginning, I'm going to be giving away a t-shirt uh, later at the end of this live stream, or at least telling you how you can get in on it. Uh, but if there's some other content you'd like to see in a 50,000 subscriber special, let me know. And I'll certainly consider doing a special 50K anniversary something episode. All right, let's go on to number five. Uh, the fifth thing... Fifth tip I've got for making travel videos after preparing the equipment is prepping to roll on the scene. So we've come up with an idea, we've done some research, we've written the script, we've prepared our equipment, and now we are someplace. And I will say when you're shooting a travel video or when I'm shooting a travel video, I don't often shoot the videos in the, the clips in the order that you actually see them in the finished product. Uh, and it may not often just be a single flow for a video. If I am in uh, Oahu for a week and I'm doing five videos, cheap eats, things to know, the best beaches, things like that, then I'll be shooting all those videos simultaneously and remembering, okay, now I'm in a restaurant, so now this is the fifth best cheap eat. Or if I'm at a beach, this is the third best sandy beach in Kauai. Uh, and so... Um, you kind of have to think about how the video is going to end up when you're done so that you can record it in a way that those clips logically get put together later and then it makes sense to you all when you watch it. Um, <clears throat> I will review my notes before the scene and uh, I'll have my camera out. I'll be standing there. I'll either have my piece of paper or my phone. I'll be looking at it being like, okay, this is what to say. And then... I need to find a good camera angle. I need to find an angle where people can see me and the sun and the attraction. I don't mean see the sun, but I mean where the light is a good place. If I'm standing in front of the Eiffel Tower, but the sun is behind the Eiffel Tower and I'm trying to get the Eiffel Tower, that's an awful shot because you won't be able to see the Eiffel Tower because the sun's behind it. So I spend a lot of time trying to figure out, okay, that attraction I want to get, what time can I get there so that I can actually capture a good video of it? Um, and... Uh, so, you know, I'll also look at, well, what's a place I can stand that's not too noisy? What's a place that I can stand that I won't bug people? Where can I put my tripod? And here's an interesting one that I didn't appreciate until doing this a lot more. Where can I be that security guards won't bug me? You know, sometimes security guards in shopping malls or places like that can be a little overzealous about things. Uh, where when they see you're recording something on a cell phone, it's not a big deal. But as soon as you pull out something like this and you become Captain Obvious, then they go like, oh, do you have a permit to film, sir? I'm like, I'm just, you know, it's not a commercial video. It's just a video for YouTube. Sir, you need a permit to film here in a Westfield mall. I'd be like, oh, fine. Come back, shoot with this. Or just go someplace else since they aren't particularly friendly to YouTubers. Uh, all right, so those are the considerations uh, before for shooting that I prepare when I am doing. Um, 
Let's see. Tanner Wilson says he would love to see some of the EPL and EFL stadium tours, possibly see a big-time soccer game in the UK sometime. All right, I'll consider that, Tanner. Though I will say I generally don't do a lot of sporting things only because I don't typically go to them. Ryan says, how old are you and when did you start making videos? I am 37 years old. I started making videos probably in about the year 2000. Uh, but, um, 2000, 2000 is probably when I started making videos. I started making travel videos probably in about 2004. Uh, sort of our first big travel video was to Japan. You won't find that on YouTube anywhere. That's pre-YouTube. And I started the Yellow Productions YouTube channel in 2008. So 10 years on YouTube. Uh, some of my old travel videos really do scare me. They really weren't that good. Uh, but I will say if you are considering making travel videos, just start. They're not going to be good to begin with. Uh, but, you know, they say practice makes perfect. Probably in my case, practice doesn't make perfect. But at least practice makes better. Uh, and you just have to try, see what works. Uh, the Travel Man podcast, uh, Ben from Melbourne, Australia, says the old videos are the best. They probably are. They're classic. And cookies, bald, greasy heads, and what? No way. I look so much younger. I look so much younger than 37, or I look so much younger in those original videos. I like to think I am just young at heart. Uh, ben from the Travel Man podcast says uh, he, hi, Chris. I like camera Chris as well, not camera Chris. How are you? Ben, have you had too much to drink this evening? I'm not sure what that means. <coughs> Cookies Bald Greasy Head says, what is your favorite food type? My favorite food type is hamburgers. Uh, I really love In-N-Out Burger. That's probably my favorite food that I eat. Um, one of my favorite drinks is iced tea. Uh, as you'll notice, I am not drinking from an In-N-Out Burger cup today. I am drinking iced tea. Italian food, I like Japanese food. I consider myself a foodie, so I like food from just about anywhere. Uh, I guess the question is, what food don't I like? Uh, but maybe that's another video. Uh, Tofur, T-O-E-F-U-R-R, -R, says, have you been offered money to promote anything travel-related in your videos? Would you consider it? Uh, Tofur, I've been offered to do some like hotel reviews where people said, hey, we'll give you a free hotel night to stay here. I haven't really done those. Um, I have done some reviews of products that maybe people send me for free and say, Chris, check this out. Share it with your audience if you're interested. Actually, I don't know where one is. I'm going to be doing a travel review of like a the world's thinnest USB travel charger. I only took that on because they also said that uh, they'd give me an extra one so that I could do it as a giveaway. So that'll be in a future video that you'll see. Um, but I get a lot of people who offer to send me like the weirdest products. Um, I did a review of the Triboard full face snorkel mask that are available in Europe, which I really love by the way, and I bought that, nobody sent it to me. But nearly every week or two, I get an email from some random Chinese company that asks if I want to review their full face snorkel mask that they sell on Amazon that has like one review on it. Uh, and so I never take them up on that offer because I'd really only be interested in making content like that that I think fits in the theme with Yellow Productions. And I never want to be someone who's going to push things to you or anybody that I don't really believe in myself. So all the hotels that you see me stay at, things like that are things I've either stayed for, paid on my own dollar, or things that I've used like reward points from previous stays. All the restaurants I've eaten at are things I've paid for with my own money. Uh, I do get that comment a lot. Like uh, people say like, oh, don't believe anything this guy has to say because in this Cheap Eats, cheap eats video, clearly all these restaurants paid him. And I will say not a single restaurant has ever paid me ever for any of my content. Um, all right, Brian Fuller says, awesome channel. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. Uh, Julio says, you're a fun person to watch. Thank you, Julio. Eric says, hi, Chris. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, Eric. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, Jeff Looney says, 50K special house tour, just like your hotel tours. Hmm, I'm going to have to think about that. Uh, what I might do that's related is I've been asked to do a 
uh, like a behind the scenes of my live stream. So I might uh, start on a small scale and give you a tour of this room right here. Uh, so you can see what's behind the camera too. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Uh, ben from the Travel Man Podcast says, we did the Melbourne travel guide a bit back to front. It was funny and interesting to see how Chris works. Hopefully like funny together, not funny because, you know, I'm... I'm ridiculous to be around. I know what you mean, Ben. I'm just, you know, having some self-deprecating humor. Uh, Prince Elijah says, is your full-time job YouTube? Prince Elijah, YouTube is definitely not my full-time job. I consider this a hobby. I do this for fun. Uh, I do get a little bit of AdSense revenue from the ads that run in it, but um, it's really not that significant. It helps to offset some of my equipment expenses, but really I, I spend a lot more on equipment and things like that than I actually get back from AdSense. I, I do it, I would say, because I love it, and I love that people watch the videos that I put out, and frankly, that's why I do it. I love the comments, and I also love when people spot me in person uh, I was spotted um, shooting the Disney California Adventure video that I do, uh, that I do, that I did, that I uploaded a couple weeks ago when I was there. Actually, there was a couple from Australia, and uh, they said that uh, they were here in the U.S., and they watched my videos on Las Vegas and Los Angeles, and so that's pretty neat. And if uh, somebody ever finds me in person, I always hand them a Yellow Productions card uh, so that if they ever want to tell anybody, they can say, yeah, we really saw him. And I think taking uh, selfies with kind of random fans is cool, too. Uh, Kirk Deption joined, says, what up, my ninja? Kirk, thanks for joining in. Kirk's uh, been MIA. His new job has me traveling a lot. Kirk, well, hey, that's perfect. Perfect for this topic. Uh, Kirk, do you have any interesting travel places? Um, Burbauer Insurance asked if YouTube gave me the subscribe pillow. No, I bought the subscribe pillow. Um, I go every year to this con convention called VidCon. VidCon's coming up in a couple weeks in Anaheim, and I bought the subscribe pillow at Anaheim. Mm -hmm. I had the yellow pillow custom made. I've had the yellow shirts custom made because I, because I am a huge dork. That's why. Um, Claire Lowe says, "Are your cameras heavy? Do you bring more than two or three of them?" Claire, when I'm doing a travel video, uh, I typically just carry the one camcorder. Though I do carry a couple cell phones. I carry a GoPro. Um, I carry this, I usually carry a selfie stick, the, the, maybe the camera weighs maybe like one pound, but this, this Gorillapod weighs a pound also. I mean, if you add it all up, the bag that I carry does seem to weigh quite a bit, but that's also one of the reasons why I don't like a DSLR is because then I would just end up carrying like 50 pounds of glass around. And I carry Topher around in my bag too. He weighs a lot with all that bamboo that he eats. All right, uh, let's go on to number six, the sixth tip for shooting videos uh, that people actually watch is shooting the main scene. Okay, so we've written the script, we're on scene, we've prepared, we know what we want to say, and we need to shoot the main scene. So lights, camera, action. And I try to pretend when I'm doing the video that it's just like a conversation, except with a piece of glass in front of me instead of a real person. Uh, it often takes me multiple takes to do a video, uh, so if you're just starting out, don't feel bad if you flub your lines once, twice, three times, ten times. It is all okay. Uh, I might even redo the same blurb in different locations. So when you see at the end of my video, there's a spiel that says... Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, links in the description below. Or you might enjoy watching one of these videos here. By the way, please don't leave this video. This video isn't done, but like that spiel, it might be good. You might not have heard the audio. You might not see it. So I'll actually often record a lot of the scenes that you hear multiple times so that I can pick the best audio. I can pick the best lighting. I can pick the best background and weave that together. Um, and so if you're shooting video, don't be afraid of multiple takes. Don't be afraid to redo it. 
don't be afraid to just let that camera roll. And it's also important to make sure the audio was captured correctly and it's understandable. So if you're in a loud location, I would uh, encourage you to play that back so you can hear it. Because as I mentioned before, the number first and most important thing for good travel video is the video quality. But the second most important thing is the audio. And if the audio is good, nobody will listen to it. And I feel like that's one of those, if I was doing a video on the top 10 mistakes amateur videographers make it is not paying attention to the audio and maybe not realizing that that audio recording is uh, lousy therefore nobody will want to listen to it um, in addition to the main scenes like which are the like probably me talking scenes in front of things um, I will also do standing shots, walking shots, walking on the shot, walking off the shot. I shoot a lot of intros. I shoot a lot of conclusions because every video needs to have a beginning and it needs to have an end. Uh, but I also think it's important um, to always get a few extra seconds of video at the beginning and at the end. So a common mistake that people make when they first start shooting video is they start recording and they start talking immediately. And as soon as they're done, they stop. Uh, but you may need to put in a transition. There may need to be a little bit of a pause, a little bit of a breather to go between one shot and another shot. So make sure to have a few seconds of padding at the beginning of the end of each of these shots. Uh, Melanie on Facebook says she has to bounce out early. Her kids want to go play nighttime laser tag. Melanie, have fun. Enjoy laser tag. I will see you in the archive. Um... All right, uh, more questions, more comments from YouTube. I love it. I love everybody's questions and comments today, by the way. Um, so Cal Seth says about burgers that he loves Teddy's Bigger Burgers or Maui Onion Burgers. I've never had Maui Onion Burgers. Is that a chain or is that just a type of burger that you get in Maui? Travel Man Podcast says, uh, I meant, I'm... I meant I like behind the camera critch at... See, I can't... So if I was doing this as a uh, not a live stream, I would totally edit that and redo that. But I can't because it's a live stream. Ben said, I meant I like behind the camera Chris as much as not behind the camera Chris. Ben, that's good to hear. Thank you very much. Uh, Brandon says, how was the Chick-fil-A and tea today? Well, you know, it's funny. You would think if I have a Chick-fil-A cup that uh, means I would have eaten a Chick-fil-A. We went to see a play the other day, a musical. We went to see Green Day's American Idiot, and um, I was thirsty afterwards. And Chick-fil-A was the closest thing on the walk back to our car, so we stopped at Chick-fil-A and got some iced tea. Nice and cold, and actually, you know, I know it's not great for the environment, but I do like their styrofoam cups because it keeps their iced tea really cold. So half of this cup is from yesterday. Uh, Burbauer Insurance says, what program do you edit with now and when you started? Have you used VideoPad? I've not used VideoPad, but I'm going to answer what I edit with in number nine. So hold that thought. Um, we'll get there before we end in 19 minutes. Um, Christian Tucker says, Chris, have you ever thought about doing a video for first time flyers? I haven't found a good one on YouTube yet. Christian, I have never thought about that, but I think you messaged me on Facebook too, right? I've yet to respond to you, but I will think about doing that. Tell me more about what you want to see in it and, uh, I'll think about what we can put in it. Burbauer says, do you have a Patreon? I do not have a Patreon account. Um, uh, Ben says, in and out pay you, lol. Yeah, it'd be nice if in and out paid me. Um, Norman says, do the videos you make generate any minor income? Uh, they do a little bit, um, from the AdSense revenue, but not a whole lot. Hendrick M says, you should try to do day in the life vlogs. Uh, okay, I'll think about that too, like a day in the life of a travel vlogger. Um, Norman Diaz says, what would you have to do with these videos to make a salary that can actually support you? That's a great question, and like VidCon has whole tracks on what it takes to be a professional YouTuber, but uh, it takes, I'd say, way more than 50,000 subscribers, and it also takes um, what people would say like a business model. Generally, people have to be selling something else or monetizing some other way through their videos and travel videos. That might be travel agency referrals or things like that that generate extra income from the videos. Um, as a hobby, then I just kind of take it as, hey, it's fun and all that stuff. Well, I've got a full-time job, so it's all good. Um, 
Let's see. Ben says Aussies are the greatest. Uh, Julio says, which city have you visited impressed you the most so far? Hmm, Julio. Uh, my favorite, probably some of my favorite cities are Tokyo and Singapore. I find those to be both very impressive cities. Uh, Jake McShane says, why do you carry multiple cell phones? Um, so I have a... I have a OnePlus, um, and they're on different carriers, and they take better pictures. Some do better video, some do different things. Um, so, and also, if I'm traveling a lot, like traveling internationally, I find that um, I don't have enough battery life on one phone. So, if I have one phone that's like my, I use it for Google Maps and I use it for my Google Doc stuff because it's on all the time, then I can use my other phone for pictures or finding things. So, that's why I carry two phones. Tanner Wilson says, if you're ever in a state like Minnesota, a great burger is called the Juicy Lucy. It's two burger patties stuffed with cheese inside the burger. It's gooey and a bit messy, but amazing. Tanner, I will look at a Juicy Lucy. Uh, Burbauer says, have you ever been to the YouTube Center in London? I've not been to the one in London, but I have been to the one in L.A. There's a YouTube studio in L.A. in Marina del Rey. Pretty interesting place. They were having an open house at it. And technically, because I have more than 10,000 subscribers, I can access any of those YouTube studios to, like, rent the studios and shoot my videos there and edit there. The one in LA is just a far drive, and so I've, I've never taken them up on that offer to do it, though I did take the open house, which was kind of cool. Uh, ben says, you do some recording at home, don't you, dude, and then mix that audio with video you've shot elsewhere. I do, absolutely. I got a big microphone uh, that I'll re-record some of the audio at home, like to do voiceovers and things like that. But I try to shoot as much um, on scene or location as possible. It's just much easier that way. Cookies Bald Greasy Heads says, have you ever been to Texas? I have been to Texas. Dallas, Houston, Austin, Amarillo, San Antonio. Uh, so I've been to a bit of Texas. And Round Top, Round Top, Texas. We stayed at this hotel called uh, Rachel, oh, Rachel something. Shabby Chic, a Shabby Chic Hotel. You could take a look at that up. Take a look, take a look at that up. You could take a look at that and look it up if you want to. Prince Elijah says, have you shot videos on your channel with the GoPro? And if yes, which video? Prince Elijah, I think I've only, I've got, I've got two videos that I've shot on GoPro. One, three videos. Three videos that I've shot on GoPro. One is snorkeling at the Andaz. If you search for snorkeling at the Andaz, you'll find that that's an underwater video. Uh, the video of my triboard full face snorkel mask. If you search for triboard review, T R I B O R D review, I shot that whole review with a GoPro. And then I shot one in Switzerland going down this toboggan ride where I had the. Um, GoPro mounted on my head. I did that one with a GoPro as well. So I've got three videos shot with GoPros. Uh, all right. Let's go on to uh, tip number seven. Okay, so this is another one that I'll consider to be more in the advanced category, but this tip is shooting B-roll. And uh, so when I first started shooting travel videos, I would just shoot whatever I think the main string is that I want to show. And that's sort of it. That's me talking in front of something, whatever. Uh, but in the sort of video industry term, B-roll is all the stuff that you see that isn't the main thing. Uh, so you'll see me, uh, I'll be talking maybe in Japan about how to ride the trains and I may reference the Shinkansen, which is the bullet train. And then you'll see a scene of the Shinkansen train pulling up into the station. Uh, and that's something that I insert over the main track that is really called B-roll. B-roll is often like scenic footage, um, shots of people walking, shots of trains, shots of buildings, shots of cars, shots of buses, shots of taxis. Uh, and so I collect a lot of B-roll. But the most important thing with B-roll is that B-roll shots are steady. You can do like a couple different types, but one is just a steady shot. It doesn't move. One's a pan shot that you just sort of like pan a little bit over. Time-lapse shots are really neat for B-roll shots. Things that might be a time-lapse of a sunset, time-lapse of an intersection, time-lapse of people crossing the street. Uh, and yeah, 
I, I never use all the B-roll that I shoot. It's sitting just on hard drives, filling up space, but it's nice to have it when I need it. Uh, and sometimes you might see in my videos that my B-roll is a picture and a picture that I just took with my phone. Uh, a lot of times in hotels I do that because I might be places where if I was standing at the front desk rolling my camera at them, they might find it pretty strange. But uh, if I just took a quick picture of them, then that's pretty simple. And you'll see that the pictures that I insert in my videos, they're never just static, unmoving pictures. I always add a little bit of um, zoom or tilt or motion into the picture, and that makes it a lot more engaging because it makes the picture almost seem like a video. It makes the picture almost seem alive. All right, the eighth uh, step for making travel videos that people actually watch, well, after you've shot the video, you've shot the B-roll, you've come home, you got to download the video. you got to download the video off your phone, off your GoPro, off your camera. So I transfer all the video off all those different devices, and I put them in a folder on my computer labeled by what device they came from. So I might have uh, the videos from my camcorder. I call that capture. I might have it from a GoPro that goes to a different folder. I might have video from my phone that goes to a different folder. I might have pictures from my phone that goes to a different folder. I might have 360-degree video that goes to a different place. So that takes a while. Um, and I generally transfer it to two different computers plus a removable hard drive. So I've always got a backup. Uh, not just if my hard drives fail, but like if I accidentally delete the folder. Because uh, there's nothing worse than going on a whole trip shooting a bunch of stuff and it goes poof. Um, and for editing, uh, this was a question that was asked earlier, is I generally use... Um, a product called Vegas. It was originally uh, produced by Sony. It's now produced by a company called Magix. I'm still using the Sony version. That's called Sony Vegas Pro. Um, that's for Windows. If I'm traveling, then I use Final Cut Pro for Mac, because uh, when I travel, I don't travel with a Windows computer, I travel with a MacBook, because it's really small and I like the battery power of it. After I've got the video, I categorize all the video into groups, topics, destinations, what video will it be in, whether it's B-roll, and then I just delete the stuff that's not good, because frankly, there's always a bunch of stuff that's not good, takes that weren't good, and so I just, I just get rid of that. That can just go away. Uh, and then, Number nine, it's time to let the editing begin. Uh, and so every time I edit a new video, I copy over a bunch of general intro text. I copy, I copy over Topher's little subscribe animation where he comes in and pops up this little subscribe thing. I've got a couple different ones, so it doesn't seem too boring when you watch it. Uh, and uh, then I, my first goal when I'm editing is to assemble a rough cut of the main track. Uh, so that's the, you know, the main video track, the main audio track. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll think, like, I'll have my topic listing, 10 things, cheap eats, whatever. I'll pick it. I'll put it in. I'll watch each clip, decide if it's good. If so, it goes on the timeline. Uh, if multiple takes, I'll watch them all. I'll pick the best one. I'll put that in. My second goal is to make sure the story is complete. And um, so this is where Ben said, I record some more stuff when I get home because sometimes there's things that like I just forgot or they didn't make sense. And so in that case, I've got to add some more voiceover. I've got to add some more audio so it makes sense. Uh, and I may have to rearrange things uh, or I may have to make corrections because I may have said something that I've discovered was wrong actually. Uh, then my third goal is to make sure the video is actually interesting if I watched it like, and I was you, would I want to watch it? So make it interesting, I'll add in B-roll, I'll shorten up the clips, I'll add transitions, generally tighten things up. My fourth goal is to make sure the audio is good and the color is good. I do adjust the color on some of the shots because sometimes if you're shooting outside and it's gray, it just looks really flat. And so I might boost the contrast, I might boost some of the saturation. I don't boost it anywhere to make it uh, look unreal, but just enough to make the yellows actually yellow and the reds actually red, not everything gray. And then my final step is to add in appropriate music. I don't do a lot of music in my videos, because um, people have said the, they feel the music takes away from the actual speaking and the information. So I'll typically just have music for the first maybe minute or so, and then it pretty much fades away. Um, if I'm doing voiceover clips, then I'll add in some background sound. Uh, and this is one, it took me a while to figure this out. If I'm recording something on the streets of Tokyo, and then I'm voicing over in my little home studio, those don't sound the same at all. So in addition to recording the sounds of me talking on location, I will also just record 
no talking, the ambient noise. And then I'll take that ambient noise and I'll put it over my voiceover track so that it sounds at least slightly similar. Uh, the final thing, number 10, is to render and upload. So the video's all done. Uh, in Sony Vegas, it's called render. In different applications, it's called export, whatever. But rendering a 4K video in Vegas can take hours. It can be like an overnight kind of thing. So, or in the daytime, I go to lunch, I ride a bike, I go to the beach, I come back, I watch the final product. If it's good, I upload it to YouTube, then I go to sleep. Uh, and because the upload to YouTube takes even longer than the render for these 4K videos that can be 8 to 10 gigabytes, it might take, you know, five hours to upload to YouTube or something like that. Uh, and then put in the title, write a description, add video cards, make a thumbnail, keyword research, activate the video, and then obsess about, like, how well it does. You know, why, why is nobody watching this video? Why are people watching? Why do people like this video when this video isn't even any good? This video is so much better. Uh, but anyway, those are all the things that, uh, you know, I would say help make better videos. Just looking at the videos that you guys actually watch and why you actually watch them. Uh, all right. So I want to talk about these contests that I'm doing right now, which is the 50,000 subscriber celebration contest for this video. And um, so I'll be giving away a t-shirt. And what I would like to know from you guys and the way that you're going to enter this contest is... Um, I posted a video, I didn't post a video, I posted a picture to Instagram, and uh, I posted this picture right here to Instagram. So if you would like to enter this contest, head over to Instagram. You can find my Instagram link in the description of the video. And uh, here's a little bit of this picture. It's Topher on this yellow shirt. Uh, the brightness is, is way too much off for you to actually see that. But find the picture of Topher sitting on the yellow shirt and uh, I'm looking to come up with like a new tagline for the Yellow Productions channel trailer. I want to come up with a new channel trailer so that when people who haven't subscribed go to the Yellow Productions channel, I'll have like a two minute intro about, hey, welcome to Yellow Productions. I'm Chris, this is Topher, and then I would like to say something about, you know, we are the internet's number one panda human traveling duo or whatever. And so the whatever is I would like your ideas on what a great tagline for Chris and Topher as a traveling duo would be. So the way you enter this contest, you go over to Instagram, you can leave a comment on the picture of Topher sitting on that and let me know what, uh, what you think our tagline should be for our traveling duo. This contest will be open for the end of this month until the end of June. So if you've got ideas, please let me know. I'm really interested. The winner will get the t-shirt and be the logo that we pick for the Yellow Productions channel trailer. So uh, that's a total way to achieve some uh, internet fame, mini fame. Can you really have fame on the internet? I don't know. All right, I'll go to final questions. I got about three minutes left here, but always people ask, when is the next live stream? The next live stream will be in three weeks. It'll be July 2nd. That's when the next live stream is going to be. So July 2nd, mark your calendar. I will announce that up on Facebook. All right. Uh, Jeff Looney says, what did you use to make the Topher animations? I used uh, a combination of Photoshop and Vegas. All those, well, I first started with Topher in front of a green screen, uh, and a green screen picture of Topher. And after the green screen picture of Topher, I took out the green screen and to make him turn, I actually had him on a little turntable, and then the uh, like logo, the subscribe that comes up, each one of those different things that says subscribe and the green thing, those are just different things I created in Photoshop, and then I used Vegas to like animate them coming in. So that's what I did for that, or the animation of little please subscribe, the bubble. That's the Photoshop file too. My intro that I've done uh, with like the yellow productions that comes in at the beginning, I did that in, um, oh, what the heck's it called? It's not Final Cut Pro, but it's the uh, Apple Motion. I did that one in Apple Motion. Um, let's see. There was a question back here about, uh, well, Cookies Ball Greasy Head says, I wish you did more live streams, like maybe two times a week or at least for a bit longer. Wow, I would run out of my voice. Well, I'll think about if there's a way I can do that. But Cookies Bald Greasy Head, let me know what other things you want me to talk about. Because I'm always looking for live stream ideas. So let me know what you want my next live stream to be about. 
Um, Claire Lowe says, is it easy for the both of you, you and your partner, to arrange days off to travel, or does it take a long time travel planning? Claire Lowe, it takes a long time travel planning. We're planning our next vacation now, which will be probably in October. So we plan these things way, way out. Um, let's see. Trout Man Podcast says, how many hard drives do you have, and do you back up to the cloud? I don't back up my video to the cloud. I have a lot of hard drives. Uh, uh, 10, 20, I don't know. I have a lot of hard drives and thumb drives and things like that. I have a lot of space. Uh, Claire Lowe says, do you have copycats? I mean, there's a lot of travel channels on YouTube. I don't know that I'd call them copycats, uh, but I think, uh, you know, I, I have not seen another Yellow Productions travel guides, at least. I think that's an original. Or anybody who carries their own panda around. Uh, ben from the Travel Man Podcast says, do you feel like we are all journalists today, Chris? Ben, I think we all are. We certainly all can be journalists. We can all have our own voice, where before it was just the voice of whoever was on TV, but we can all absolutely have a voice. And sometimes when people <coughs> pick on my videos and say, like, this video sucks, then I say, like, I would love to see yours that is better. Please make the better one and share the link with me. Uh, and I don't mean that facetiously, but I'd really like if people say, oh, there could totally be one better. Like, we can all do that. We can all make a better one. Um, let's see. Brandon says he likes the music I put in the videos. Thanks, Brandon. I use a site called Killer Tracks for that. Uh, Christian Tucker says, I messed you on Instagram with some rough thoughts on a first-time flyer's guide. Thanks. Christian, I did see that. Uh, give me more thoughts, though. Uh, I need a little more thoughts to make that video. Uh, Christian Tucker says SoundCloud is a great place for free music videos, free music for videos. Uh, SoCal Seth said agree that rendering takes forever. Just don't become man bear pig. I will not become man bear pig. That doesn't sound like a cool logo. Claire Lowe says, uh, do you do this all by yourself? Do you take some digital marketing courses, video editing courses to be that successful? Most of the video editing stuff I've learned on my own through YouTube or those sorts of things. I will say I probably got started in a lot of this because my dad, he was a wedding videographer. Uh, and so when I was younger, in my teens, he'd take me out on weddings and I'd help him shoot wedding videos. Uh, and so I've compiled, I guess, some of those basic skills to then lead into the travel stuff about, you know, microphones and all those things. So that was kind of where I got my jump start. But a lot of the editing and this and that, that's all changed uh, since he did it uh, to what, what things are today. Uh, he might be watching right now, and so if he is, if my dad's watching, uh, his name is Rick. And uh, so, Rick, uh, happy Father's Day, and thanks for uh, thanks for getting me kickstarted in this whole thing. Actually, when I was ooh, when I was maybe five years old, my dad he was really big into video equipment, and I used to do this show at home at five years old called Christopher's World. Uh, I'll ask my dad and see if we can dig up some Christopher's World uh, to maybe show you some uh, very, very early Yellow Productions. Um, and uh, let's see. Cookie says, I hope you make streams longer or more frequent. All right, Cookies, I'll think about how I do that. Brandon says, thanks for the live stream. Congrats again, 50K subs. Brandon, thank you. Uh, it is a long time until July. I'm sorry. Uh, but I guess that's what happens when I'm out and about. Uh, Travel Man Podcast Ben says, uh, well done for 50,000 subs. You deserve so much more. Thank you, Ben. You are too kind. Tover says, thanks you as well. Kirk says, the next live stream should be about Thailand. You know, Kirk, it should be. But since I haven't been to Thailand yet, I'll probably wait until I actually go. Uh, and then I'll have great content to talk about Thailand. Brand says, can't wait for July. Uh, Kirk says, I can't find your Instagram. A lot of Yellow Productions names. Uh, Kirk, um, find the link in my video description. It's like, if you look in the description of this video, there's a link. Actually, if you look in the description of any video that I have, there's a link to my Instagram. Uh, but it's also, just if like you want the URL, it's Yellow Productions with two W's. Y-E-L-L-O-W-W. Productions, all, that's the URL. Uh, Norman says, excellent video and content. Thanks, Norman. Cookies Bald Greasy Head says, I can't think of any good ideas now. Can I leave a comment on your most recent video? Cookies Bald Greasy Head, leave me a comment anywhere you want to. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I, I will put it all. Uh, I always keep a file for video ideas, so if you've got one, I always drop it in there and then look back on those when I need some inspiration. Claire Lowe says, hi, Rick. So, Dad, I hope you're online. Claire says, hi. 
Uh, SoCal Sets says, like Bobby's World or Wayne's World, maybe. Uh, Future Death says, any place you would never want to go back to travel. Future Death, I don't think there's any place that I would never want to go back to travel except Naples, Italy, when they're having their trash strike. There, that place. Kirk says, good night. Brandon says, three cheers for Yellow Productions. Zippy says, congrats on 50,000. Thanks, Zippy. Jeff Looney says, live stream tips for preparing, researching for a trip. All right, Jeff, uh, I'll think about that one. Uh, Ryan says, thanks, Chris. Good night. If anybody just joined in, make sure to win that Yellow Productions t-shirt if you have that good logo idea. Dieter says he wants me to look up those clips. Uh, thanks to also everybody on uh, Facebook, uh, Jose, Scotty, Campbell, and everybody that's up there too. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Uh, Topher is going to say good night. ZY says, how long have you had Topher? Uh, it's probably been at least 14 years that I've had Topher. And Cookies Bald Greasy Head asks, how will you celebrate the 50,000, 50K milestone? Probably by having a double-double from In-N-Out Burger. That's how I celebrate a lot of things. All right. Good night, all. Keep on traveling. Uh, I'll see you. Well... You'll see me this Wednesday when I upload my next video on London, but I'll see you all in the next live stream in three weeks on July 2nd. Till then, keep those ideas about the mottos coming over on Instagram. All right, peace.